Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. I'll be your host. My name is Monica Godoy and I am part of the Oracle Apex team. Today you are going to learn how to create an application based on existing tables. And before to start the workshop, we would like to know you better. So please navigate to this link to fill out a short anonymous survey. The link is going to be shared as well in the chat. And here's the agenda. Today, I'm going to give you an overview about Apex. Then I will walk you uh, to the creation of the Oracle Autonomous Database and how to create your Apex application based on existing tables. If you have any questions, please post those in the chat and we are going to be happy to answer. Okay, so here's a video made by Chucky Roman, member of the Apex development team, uh, to give you an idea about everything you can build with Apex. Hi, I'm Shakib and I build apps using Oracle Apex. Apex is a low-code platform that enables you to build applications fast. And it's used by customers around the globe, across all industries. One of my recent projects was focused on building apps that handle logistics for large-scale vaccinations, including scheduling, safety monitoring, and on-site queuing and processing. Now, these are mission-critical systems that need to be built fast. In the real world, requirements change, and they change often. This is where Apex shines. Making changes to your apps can be as simple as dragging and dropping components on a page. And when you're finished, simply save and run your page again. Apex includes a number of powerful components, like faceted search that enables you to explore your data like never before. And if you're not an expert in HTML or CSS, or you don't have an affinity for UI design, Apex has got you covered there too. With features like theme roller and template options, you can easily customize the look and feel of your application in real time without writing a single line of CSS. Everything you build is responsive, so it works on any tablet or mobile device out of the box. If you're familiar with SQL, you're going to feel right at home. With Apex, every feature of the Oracle database is at your fingertips, meaning you can easily add things like spatial or analytic functions in no time. There's a whole lot more to Apex than what I covered in this short intro. To learn more, visit apex.oracle.com and get started today. Okay, so as Chakib said, Oracle Apex is a framework uh, to build desktop and mobile web applications that are to its fully responsive frontend. And the customers that have a lot of data in the Oracle database, uh, they can find that the easiest way for them to develop uh, is using that local data. And they can develop a rich user interface on top of that data. With Apex, you can create applications using existing data in your database, or it can serve as the front end to maintain your data. Most business processes are data-driven, and Apex provides an easy and elegant way to build a user interface on this data. Also, if you know a little bit of SQL, you can flourish in Apex. Rather than you run down a lot of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, to manipulate the data, you can do all natively by SQL. And you don't need a specialized coding languages to create applications since it leverages SQL skills. Okay, so now let's move on uh, to the workshop. And the first thing you need to do is to sign up for an Oracle free trivial account. And probably you already have done this step but in the next slide, I will share the link to create your free trial account. Secondly, you are going to create the autonomous database, create an Apex workspace, and finally create an Apex application based on existing tables. Okay, if you don't have an Oracle account, please use this link to create it. Your email address is well listed. So please use the same email address that you use to register to this event. In case that you are facing issues where 
using your email address, please post those, uh, please post the issue in the chat, including your email address. Okay. Okay, here's the link to the lab. So you can follow the steps by your own, at your own pace during this workshop or later. Okay, so let's get it started. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see, first uh, the lab. And here's the lab that we are going to follow today, creating an application based on existing tables for Oracle Autonomous Cloud Service. So in order to follow this lab, you have three options. So you can run this lab using uh, the APEX service, or you can use Oracle Autonomous Database, or the third option is using apex.oracle.com. For uh, the purpose of this workshop, we are going to use Oracle Autonomous Database. So you will need to create an Oracle Cloud account and follow all these steps, okay? Probably you already have done this step. And after that, you have to provision or to create your autonomous database. So I'm going to show you how to create your autonomous database. And for that, I'm going to go to my Oracle Cloud environment, it is the home page, and let's navigate to the autonomous translation process, processing right here. Let's click here. And I'm going to create a new autonomous database, okay? Notice that I'm, I'm using a free trial account as you are doing as the same. And uh, okay, we need to provide some basic information to create this autonomous database. We can use the root compartment or you can use a different one, okay? And for display name, you can enter a user-friendly name. In this case, I'm going to use office hours um, today. today. All right. uh, for the database name, you can enter uh, letters and numbers, but I'm going to give it, give it as default. Uh, for the workload type, I'm going to select transaction processing, deployment type, let's select shared infrastructure, and make sure that you are going to use uh, the always free services, okay? In that way, you can use this uh, database as long as you are using, okay? So you are, going to use, you are going to be able to use this database anytime, and it's important that you have activity using this uh, database, right? So by default, we get one CPU and 20 gigas for storage. Now let's enter an, uh, a password for the credentials, okay? So you can use for username, default name is admin and you can enter the, the password and confirm the password. So I have one password that I always use uh, because it's, it's important that you uh, save the password. Don't forget about it, okay? And um, now let's choose the network access. I'm going to give it as, leave it as default and just click create autonomous database. Okay, so it will take some minutes while my ATP is provisioned. And in the meantime, you can see the general information regarding this autonomous database, uh, the metrics. Of course, this is a new database, but after you start using the, the database, you are going to see the information right here, okay? So in the next two autonomous database information, you are going to find the 
tools tab. And here you can use SQL Developer Web or Oracle Application Express. Once the um, ATP is ready to go, we are going to ready also to use Apex. So let's wait for some minutes and we can start uh, using the, uh, the database and start creating the application, okay? So let us know how, how do you go in the process, if what's easy for you to create the autonomous database, if you already have an Oracle uh, Cloud account, okay? Great. So now my ATP, my autonomous database is available, so I'm able, so I can run Apex. Remember, go to the Tools tab and click Open Apex. And we are. We just did all these steps. We are right here in the step number 10. All right. So now uh, we are going to sign in into the administration services using the same password that you use to create the autonomous service. Click sign into administration. And we are welcome to uh, Oracle Application Express, and the next step is to create a workspace. So click right here and enter the database user, uh, a password, and the work na workspace name is going to be the same as you enter for database user, okay? So enter a password and click create workspace. Okay, at the top, you are going to find uh, a message that says that the workspace was created and we need to sign out administration service in order to sign in to the new workspace. Click right here in the demo. And as you can see, we already have the name of the workspace and the name of the user, okay? so. We are ready to sign in. And here's the uh, environment, the development environment for Apex. And you can find four uh, main components. The app builder, where you can create the applications, uh, SQL workshop, where you can create and maintain the database objects, team development, to allow you to track different projects that you create here in, in Apex. And the app gallery contains a number of productivity and sample applications that can be installed in minutes, okay? So let's see uh, what are the objects that we have here in the autonomous service that we just create. For that, I'm going to go to SQL Workshop, Object Browser, And if you go there, you will have noticed that we don't have any table, okay? We don't have any view, absolutely anything. So we need to start creating something. We need to start creating at least one table. And for that, we are going to use sample data sets, okay? So let's go to SQL Workshop, Utilities, and you can find the sample data sets. Click right here. And uh, for the purpose of the project, we are going to use project data. So okay, uh, the only thing that you need to do is to install this uh, sample data set. Click install and click next. And review the database objects that you are just about to create and install data set.
Okay, so uh, the objects are ready and we can create the application right here or I can show you how to create uh, the new application. Okay, so we just can exit this wizard and let me show you the, ob the objects that we just create. And we have a number of tables here. Let's select one. And we have the columns, and you can see also the data included in this table. Okay, so we have just complete the lab number one. We just create the project tables, and we just review these database objects. Okay, so now the next step is to create the uh, the application using uh, the create application wizard. Okay, so for that, we're going to go to the app builder and click create a new application. Okay, so, okay, let's click new application. And let, we need to enter a name for this new application. And we are going to use, enter the name projects. Okay. And uh, we have to define the appearance of this application. So we have different styles here. So you can select any of these uh, styles, or then you can define another uh, style, okay? So for the purpose of the workshop, we are going to use beta slate, save changes. And we can start adding some pages to this application. For that, click on that page. And the first thing that we are going to do is to create a dashboard page. A dashboard page is a great way to show important information using different charts, okay? So let's select a dashboard. And we can include four charts right here in this page. For the number, for the first chart, we are going to use a bar. And we need to enter the name of this chart. And we are going to use budget versus cost. Okay. And the table that we are going to use for this chart is if a project in reality is a, it's a view. So we select that one. And the label is name. And the value is budget versus cost. So we can select the column right here. Okay. With that, we are ready for chart number one. But let's go to chart number two. And we are going to use apply. The name is project status. Okay, and we are going to use a view called EVA projects. The label is the status, and we are going to count all the columns. Okay, now let's go to chart number three, and we are going to select a bar. And the name of this chart is project leads. Select the view, Eva projects B. And the label is project lead. Again, we are going to count all the columns and we are ready for the dashboard page. We are not going to enter any data for chart number four. So we can just click add page. Okay, and now at another page. In this case, uh, we need to maintain 
uh, or we want to see the information for the project. Uh, and we are going to use a card, the cards page. So click in, uh, on cards. And the name of this page is projects. And the table is Eva projects. Okay. The title column is name, body description, uh, body column, sorry, is description. And the icon uh, initials, we are going to select name. And for the bash column, we are going to select completed set. Okay. So we are ready with this page and we can add this page to the application. Now let's add another page and we are going to uh, select an interactive report in order to see all the milestones that we have in, in, the, in the table, okay? And so we just select interactive report, enter the page name, in this case is milestones, and select the table. Eva projects milestones right here. And for the purpose of this workshop, we need to include the form in order that allows user not only to see the data, but also to maintain that data, okay? Expand the lookup columns, and we are going to select project ID, and the display column is the project's name. Okay, so we're ready with this page. And now we move uh, to add another page using the face search. Okay, so for this page, we are going to select uh, first uh, the information that we are going to see here is the EVA project task. So the page name is task search. And the table is EVA project task, okay? Um, and that's all. We could include a form, but we really don't need it, okay? So add the page. And, um, we can change, you can notice that we can edit any of these pages at any moment. And also you can drag uh, and drop the, the pages in, or, in order to reorder the pages, okay? So it depends as you need it. And for the purpose of the workshop, I'm going to reorder this page right here under the project, okay? Now uh, we are going to add another page. And for this page, we're going to use interactive report. Okay. And we are going to uh, use interactive report in order to see and maintain this data. Okay. So the name of this page is task report. And the table is EVA project task. Okay. And for this page, we are going to include a form. And let's expand the lookup columns. Okay. So for the, pro for the first lookup, select the project ID. And we are going to display the name of this project. Uh, for the second lookup, select milestone ID, and we are going to select the milestone name, okay? Add this page. And the last thing is uh, we are going to include a calendar, okay? So let's add a new page and click calendar. And the name of this page is task 
sorry on that. And select the table. In this case, it's Eva project task. We're going to display the name. For start date, select the column start date. And end date, select end date column. Okay. And just add this page. Okay, so notice that we have at several pages right here. And the, la the last thing that we need to do is to create the application. So just click create application and Apex is going to create all the pages that you just defined. And after that, you are ready to run the application, okay? So in the meantime, let us know uh, if you are following the, the steps, what do you think about this uh, workshop? And uh, if you have your Oracle Cloud account. Okay, my application is ready. So I can run the application right here. So here is the home of your application and you can find all the pages that you just create are listed here. And you have two different types of view. So just click run application. And we can use uh, the same credentials that you used to and sign in to the workshop, to the workspace. So let's enter them and the password. Okay, so here is the homepage of your application. And if you go to the navigation menu, you can find all the pages that you just created. Okay, so you can play around with the pages to see the different components that you just create. For example, here's the dashboard and you can see different information uh, regarding the, uh, the data, okay? So you can see the project status, project list. Uh, if we go to the projects, so here's the cars uh, page. And if we go to, for example, to the milestones, let's see, this is an interactive report and you can apply different actions to this interactive report, like filter or uh, a create a, a computation. You can define a highlight or you can create a control break or any other actions that you can see. And also you can download this data. But let's see this page. This is just four columns, project, name, description, and the date. So, if we go to, if we click the little IA pencil, you can open a form and it also includes uh, only four items, the project, the name, the description, and the date. And maybe we can change uh, this, this page because there's another way to see the data and also to maintain the data like a spreadsheet. And we can use an interactive read. So, Maybe it's a good option uh, to create, to regenerate this application. And for that, we can delete this application and create it again, but using the load blueprint. So we are not going to start creating the application from scratch. We can, we can start creating the application using the load blueprint. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. Okay, so let's come back and we are going to delete this application, okay? Okay, so now the application was deleted and 
we are going to create a new application, but don't worry, we are not going uh, to start uh, creating one page uh, as we did um, before. We are going to load a blueprint, and there you can find, let me show you, here is the load blueprint, and here is the page, here is the, the application that we just created. So we're going to load this blueprint. And we have a template of the application that we just created. So what are we going to do? We are going to uh, delete the milestones page because we don't want to use an uh, interactive report with form for milestones. We are going to use an interactive grid. So let me edit this page and uh, just click on delete. Okay, so now we are going to add another page for uh, the milestones, but in this case, we're going to use the interactive grid. Okay. So here is the interactive grid. Okay. So the page of this um, page is milestones. Okay. And the table is Eva Project Milestones. Okay, so we just add this page and we are going to add another page to maintain the status of the of the task, okay, of the projects. So Let's add another page here. And we are going to use also an interactive grid. And the name of this page in this case is status. And the table we're going to use is Eva project status. Okay, right here. And add the page. Okay, so ah, very important, something that I forgot to do, is that uh, we want to use uh, this page that is going to be also, uh, only available for administrators. So we want to use set this page as administration page and only the, per the, the users that are administrators can see this page. Okay, so let's, Save the changes. And now let's select all the features and create the application. Okay, so if we go to the lab, we already go, we already finish uh, the lab number three. We complete all the application and we are ready to improve and to run the application. Okay, so we are going to start lab number four. So let me close this. And just a heads up that in apps, in apps Tom, you are going to find the developer playground and you can see uh, the, the record of all of the sessions. You can see uh, the past sessions, and you also can see the record of this session, okay? Okay, so the application is ready, and we are going to run it. Again, we are going to use the demo user, and here is the home page of your application. If we go to, um, to the milestones, you can see that now you are using an interactive grid that allows you not only to see the data, but also you can make changes directly here in using the interactive grid. So you don't need to have two pages. We just we only have one page to maintain the data and also to see and, and also you can create 
different actions to this specific interactive way. Okay. If you go to the administration and at the top, you are going to find the application administration. If we go, if we click on the status, you can see uh, the different uh, codes or different uh, values that you can um, assign to a task or a project. Okay. And we have the information. If you uh, want to add another status, you can add a new role. Okay. So you can navigate the whole application in order to see the different components that are part of the application and you can and that you can uh, create using Apex. Okay, so uh, as I say, uh, we are going to start lab number four, improving the dashboard. Okay, so let's go to the, to the application and let me go to the dashboard. And remember that we define three charts, budget versus calls, project status, and project list. We didn't define anything for chart number four. So it's a good idea to remove this chart. And for that, we can uh, edit this particular page. At the bottom, you can find the runtime, the, the developer toolbar, and it has different actions. So you can go to the home of Apex, you can go to the home of the application, you can go to edit this page, uh, debug the application, and the last one is the team roller. So if you click in team roller, you can set uh, different properties for this application. You can change the style of the application or uh, you can select different properties, okay? So for example, you can change the colors or any other uh, settings that you want to apply to your style, okay? Also, you can enter custom CSS, okay? So let's go to edit this page. In, my case, in this case, it's the page number two. And uh, here we have the page designer, okay? In the, in, here is where you will spend the majority of the time improving the application. And we have three panes. The first pane, or the left pane it displays the rendering tree with a list of page components, as you can see, okay? And in the middle pane, uh, you can see the layout representation of the page and the gallery from which you can drag and drop a new components into the layout. So let me span a little bit here and you can find regions, items, and buttons, okay? So you need to add a new uh, a button or a new item, you just drag and drop, okay? And the right pane is the property editor where you can change attributes for the selected component, okay? So what we want to do is to remove this chart, the chart number four. So you have two options to delete it. You can click, right, you can right click uh, on the component and click on delete, or you just can hit delete using your keyboard, okay? And run the page again. And now you can see that you have the three, the three charts. And also if you want, you can add any other chart or uh, make a change uh, to the existing chart, okay? Okay, so the next step is to move the regions, okay? So for example, if we want, uh, we can uh, change how we are going to see these uh, different components. Uh, let me on this, for example, if you go to the project status, you can start a new row and you can see each uh, chart in a different line. If we run that, 
there's another way that you can see the information, okay? Or we can see budget versus cost in one line and project status and project leaks and on the same line, okay? So let's do that. And I'm going to uh, select project leaks. If we go to the properties and I'm going to switch off this uh, starting row and play again. Okay, so there are different uh, options that you have in order to uh, display the information and how you want to see uh, the charts or any other components inside of Apex. Okay, so we are already done the lab number four, improving the dashboard. And now let's move to the uh, project lab number five. We're going to make different changes right here using the cars region. So let me show you the cars region first. So here is the car region and you can edit these cards uh, if you want to change uh, the style of the yeah the styles the style of these icons so you can click on quick edit and if you select the cards region you are going to find this little branch at the top right click there and you can find these live template options so you have different styles for the icons. For example, uh, you have a style B, C, or A, okay? For the purpose of the workshop, we are going to use style A, save. And notice that you have other options that you can select uh, using the quick edit, okay? Okay, so the next step is that you maybe have noticed that you can list all the projects, the information uh, for the projects, but you can uh, maintain the data. So one option is that we can create a form page in order to allow users to maintain this data. So for that, We are going, you can enhance the projects page, but I want to show you how uh, to create a page, a form page, and also how to link uh, the page uh, when you select one of the projects, okay? So I'm going to go to the step number three, adding a form page, okay? And for that, we need to go to the page designer and we you have, two options to create a new page. You can go to the application homepage and create a page, or if you are in the page designer, let's go to create this uh, form page again. Uh, okay, so we are not going to create the, the form page. Uh, hopefully you have seen the steps. And now the, the name, you are going to enter the, the name of this page and is the, we're going to enter project and we're going to use a mobile dialect page and let's click next and we're going to set for navigation menu we're going to select identify an existing navigation menu entry and we're going to select the project right here Okay, so the next step is to select the primary key. In this case, it's the ID. And let's create this page. Okay, so now we have a model dialog page, but we need to link this new page with the cars uh, page. Okay, so for that, we are going to go to edit the cars page, in this case, it's then page number three. Let's go there. And we can add some actions, okay? For that, we are going to create a new action. And in this case, we are going to use the full card. 
And the link that we are going to use is to, re to redirect to a page in this application. And let's define the target. The page is right here in this application. And let's select the page that we just create. In this case, it's the, the form page and it's the number 10 page. And we need to set some items, okay, in order to know what are the projects that you want to see, that you want to uh, review the details, okay? So we are going to set the ID and the value, okay? Also, it's a good idea to clear the cache and click OK, okay? So we are ready, save the changes and run the page. So we can click in any of the projects and then we can review the information, okay? There are many other uh, steps that you can follow in order to enhance this form page and also to improve the milestones, improve the tasks, and, and you can see all the details right here in the lab. Since, unfortunately, we are run out of time but you can follow uh, the steps described in the lab. And if at any moment you have a question or something that is, or you think is an issue, please submit that feedback or your question in the live labs support form. Okay, go right here and please uh, create a question. And Remember that if you have, or you want to see, or if you want to learn more about Apex, you can go to apex.oracle.com and there you can find different information that, uh, that you can read uh, regarding Apex, okay? Um, Marty, something that you want to add? No, that was great, uh, Monica, walkthrough. Um, I just wanted to say, um, please go ahead and get your free trial today because you will receive the $500 promo credit. Um, and then um, I'll put the uh, lab guide in the chat so that you can access it at least and bookmark it so that at your leisure, you can go through the lab. And we will also be sending the recording out in the next couple of days and you'll receive that through email. I don't know, Monica, do you want me to send the um, link to the survey? Uh, can you please share the link in the chat? Yes. Please? Yeah, I would like to, uh, to see the feedback uh, from you. And if you want to see uh, something different here in the, um, in the workshops, please let us know. And thank you for joining.